Let's now quickly revise accounting standard 25 which talks about interim financial reporting. The objective of the standard is to prescribe the minimum content that should be reported in the financial statements that we prepare for a period lesser than the accounting period. And it also talks about the recognition principles. How to recognize the expense for this interim period. How to measure that expense, income, asset or liability for this interim period. That is the objective. See the standard doesn't tell who should prepare interim financial reporting. But the standard says if you are preparing interim financial reporting, you would have to do as per accounting standard 25. Why do you do? Two reasons. Number one, voluntarily your investors are seeking. The person who is going to give you money is seeking. Or the bank in which you have taken loan is seeking you to give you quarterly report or any interim report. Then you would do. Second reason, if you are a listed entity, if you are listed in a stock exchange, so it is a requirement as per clause 41 of listing agreement that you give quarterly reports to that stock exchange. So it is applicable if you are a listed entity or you need it on voluntary basis to give it to your lender or investor. Then if you are preparing interim financial reporting, you have to follow accounting standard 25. There is no other option. And interim period refers to a period anything lesser than the financial year. Financial year is between a 12 months. If you prepare financial statements for a period lesser than 12 months, 9 months, 10 months, 5 months, 6 months, A25 is applicable. Very, very important thing. What if you start your financial year during the current year? This is your first year of operation. Started your operations on 1st of October. At the end of the year, you prepare financial statements for 6 months. That does not become interim period. That becomes complete financial year. And that is the annual financial statement you prepare. And it is not interim financial statement. For that, AS25 is not applicable. You prepare it as per the normal process. You all understand this? Next, when you do interim financial report, you have two options. You can do a complete set as if it's a complete financial statement. Or you can do a condensed set. When you say condensed set, no. Whatever was your previous financial statement, subtotal and line headings, whatever is there, there, those items will be represented in like a summary statement. It is not 100% in detail. Got that? Next. What is the form and content for interim financial statement? You need to prepare condensed balance sheet. You need to prepare condensed statement of profit or loss. Condensed statement showing changes in equity, cash flow statement, explanatory statement, notes to accounts and everything. And whenever you prepare this, the complete set like I mentioned is like a complete financial statement. Whereas in the condensed set, we need to disclose minimum information. Meaning in the previous financial statement we prepared, that headings will be there, no? Whatever headings and subtotals are there. At least those subtotals should be covered. You need not have detailed items inside every subtotal. Let's say other expenses detail may each expense detail is not required. Total of employee benefit form. Total of revenue from operation. Total of other income. Total of trade payables, trade receivables. So much if it's there, it is good enough. However, you need to make additional disclosures to ensure that the user of the financial statement is not deceived by the summary statement. Or it should not be misunderstood by the user. So we need to make all such disclosures to ensure that it is not misleading or it will not lead to uh, misunderstanding by the user. Understood that? Then whenever we prepare statement of profit or loss for the uh, interim period, we should still compute our basic EPS and diluted EPS. And whenever we prepare financial statement, we usually prepare comparative. We should do it in the case of interim financial reporting also. Whenever we do con condensed balance sheet, let's say at the end of the second quarter, 30th of September 2024, I am preparing one condensed balance sheet. For this, comparative will be the previous year financial end. Your previous financial year end. That is when you do condensed balance sheet as on 30th of September 2024, you should also do one balance sheet for 31st of March 2024. 23-24th year end. That will become the comparative. However, when you do consolidated profit or loss, you do one, sorry, when you do condensed profit or loss, you do one for the period. When you are doing for quarter 2, ending on 30th September, it begins in July. So, for July, August, September, one P&L will be prepared. Current year, 2024, you need to do one more YCD statement. It is called as year to date. So, interim period is July, August, September. You do July, August, September P&L. You need to do April to September also P&L. You need to do one P&L for July, August, September. 
one from april to september april to september one is called as ytd year to date for comparative to this you need to do one more of previous year july august september 2024 july august september 2023 comparative april 2024 to september 2024 for this comparative april 2023 to september 2023 same to same provisions will apply for cash flow statement also all the necessary notes and significant accounting policies have to be given when we do it for one complete accounting period no we follow nice recognition principles and measurement whenever we do it for less than an accounting period it is based on lot of accounting estimates and we need to keep in mind materiality when we do this accounting estimates are very normal and way too high when you do interim reports all of this have to be disclosed and how much to disclose in the condensed financial statement depends upon the materiality the extent to which it can affect the users decision making and in this recognition and measurement when we talk about revenue items if it is relating to that interim period it has to be recognized in that interim period if it is not cyclic sorry if it is cyclical if it is seasonal or if it is occasional still you would have to record it for that period relating to whatever happens in that period has to be recorded in that period only let's say q3 quarter 3 there is high sales can i defer it to quarter 4 and then anticipating quarter 2 and quarter 1 no quarter 1 sales has to be recognized in quarter 1 quarter 2 sales has to be recognized in quarter 2 quarter 3 sales has to be recognized in quarter 3 we cannot defer defer means postpone into next quarter anticipate means recognizing one quarter clear we cannot defer we cannot anticipate that that quarter expense that that quarter that that quarter income that that quarter the whatever i told no that uh, seasonal or occasional items can be dividend royalty grant in the case of income or it can be any other expense also and with regard to expense also same thing it can be neither deferred not anticipated you should record that quarter expense in that quarter interim financial report however if those two interim periods are considered as two accounting years and if you are deferring then you should defer example is prepaid rent if you pay rent for two years at once you only record this year's rent in this year clearly next year's rent you transfer to next year as prepaid rent in the current year balance sheet same you should do in interim reports and royalty understood then comes the beautiful topic with regard to income tax with regard to income tax there can be brought forward loss from previous year or there can be slab wise rate applicable or there can be profit in one of the quarters and loss in the other quarter what we do in that case is you should always remember that tax is not paid on quarterly profit tax is paid annually so we should take the entire quarter's profits to adjustment of carry forward profit if there is any to slab wise rate if you want to do or if it falling in two different financial years apply apply different tax rates identify the total tax for the entire year total tax divided by total income for the current year gives you effective tax rate that effective tax rate should be applied it does not matter whether the accounting year falls in two different years whether there is carry forward loss or there is uh, slab rate applicable in all the cases we should always compute effective tax rate for the entire year and that tax rate will be applied on each individual year for each individual quarter profit understood then we have accounting policies see in the preparation of financial statement we follow accounting policies there are accounting principles and methods of applying those accounting principles these accounting principles what we follow should be consistent from one accounting year to another accounting year and they should be consistent from one interim period to another interim period meaning accounting policy should be same for the entire year however if in case you have changed your accounting policy in the middle of the year in from let's say first quarter is over you are in the second quarter and you change your accounting policy what should you do you need to redraft your interim report for the first quarter because it is change in accounting policy you should give retrospective effect however if it is change in accounting estimate it will not be giving retrospective effect it will only give very good all the things which are not obvious has to be disclosed this we do in any other case also in the normal financial statements also we learn it in as5 or non uh, sorry extraordinary items exceptional items has to be disclosed separately 
in the case of schedule 3 you would have learned non cash consideration if it is issued against issue of shares that has to be disclosed separately or if there is segment wise reporting that has to be done you should disclose separately contingent liabilities if there is any changes that has to be disclosed separately this is not the exhaustive list but the list of items whenever something non obvious is appearing in the financial reports that should be disclosed separately last part is called transitional provision that is nothing but first time implementation of ifr or first year of reporting let's say my entity started in first of october 2023 on 31st of march 2025 i prepare my financial statement if i want to prepare interim reporting for that first quarter that 31st of uh, sorry first of october to 31st of december when i prepare what to say q3 basically for my business q1 accounting year ke q3 if i prepare interim financial report i cannot prepare comparative of previous year why previous year i was not there my business was not there nothing is there so that comparative what is the concept is exempted if in case you are doing the financial reporting for an interim period for the first trimester do you all get that that's quick revision of accounting standard 25